Thanks for tuning in to Pedra's Community Spotlight. Today, I'm joined by the Executive Director of PC Project, Janice Schwartz. Thank you so much for being here today, Janice. I can't wait to learn about PC Project and all the work you're doing. Thanks, Jen, for having me. What a privilege to be here with you and Pedra. You guys are such a fabulous organization. It's good oh, to be here. thank you. Tell us about the organization and tell us about the work you're doing. So PC stands for Pakanikia Congenita, and that is a long word. Nobody can say it. And so we rightly say PC. And PC is a very, very debilitating skin disorder. In fact, I should tell you, PC or Pakanikia itself means thick nails. But PC is so much more than thick nails. Our patients have um, sores, blisters, calluses on the bottoms of their feet that make it very painful to walk. And so, it, and in fact, depending on the mutation or where the mutation is, they may have um, cysts that are all over their bodies that are also very oh. debilitating. So the number one feature of PC is pain. And people don't always think about that because, you know, PC, you know, they think, oh, thick nails. So it can't be that bad of a disease, but it actually really is. So we started PC Project because I'll just say right from the beginning, I have PC and I have two children with PC. And it was my mother-in-law that said, we got to do something. And, mm -hmm. and so that's how it started. And in fact, if you know anything about our organization, our, our logo is, is a heart with a DNA strand in it. And we are founded on love. And, and we never forget that. Everything that we do each day is driven by love. And so what we do is we, first of all, the, the main goal for us is we want to cure. The whole reason we started PC Project in the first place is because we want to cure for PC. Nothing was happening in research and we wanted to cure. So we're doing that two ways. One is we facilitate research. So we bring researchers, gather them together all around the world to talk about what they're doing in their labs or their, their universities and they collaborate. It's a very collaborative group. And then the other way we're going about trying to find a cure is through patients. We were very naive. When we first started PC Project, we thought, oh, we can just give maybe, you know, a research or two some money and then voila, mm -hmm. we'll have a cure. And mm -hmm. we didn't realize that you kind of need a little more than, than, than that, you know, to, right. to get things going. And so we needed patients and, mm -hmm. and we serve patients now in over 50 countries. So they come to us for help and guidance from all over the world. So the half of us is the research and the other half is helping and supporting patients. And we do patient support group meetings um, once a year and via Zoom if we're in a pandemic, or we have a, a really hop and happening Facebook private group. For whatever reason, PCers, we call ourselves PCers because again, we shorten everything, hide their disease. For whatever reason, they are so embarrassed that they have PC, which is really kind of sad, but um, mm -hmm. they do. And, and so we have a private group because they don't want anybody to know that they have PC. And so, but anyway, we support patients that way. And in fact, it's, it's a nice thing for me to remember, you know, we don't have a treatment yet that's approved. We don't have a cure, clearly. And, um, but we love that we can help patients have an answer. They come to us. In fact, I was on a call with a patient not that long ago and um, she had just found us. She joined the registry. I mean, I'd, I'd reviewed her case, her photos and I'm sure she's a slam dunk for a PC. And um, we were talking and, and at some point in the conversation she quit talking and I'm like, is she there? Is she there? <laughs> and, and I realized she was weeping. And the reason she was weeping is because she's 30 years old and she has never had a diagnosis. She, mm -hmm. And she found us through an internet search. And wow. um, she was so overwhelmed to be finally talking to someone for the first time in her life. And that's a, um, that understands her, that gets her, that realizes mm -hmm. that she can walk one day and she can walk a certain amount of steps. And then suddenly she can't walk another step. That is really hard for people in I don't want to say including doctors, but for even some doctors to understand, it's a, mm -hmm. it's a very strange thing about PC. And so she's just one example of many, many examples that we get all the time. And so even though we don't have a, a treatment right this minute, mm -hmm. um, I really like to think that we're helping patients. And um, just the fact that we can put a name for a patient is, is really empowering. Jen, it, that is such an incredible story. I love that it was sort of you know, you, you and your children and then your mother-in-law just really 
driving this organization forward and gone from starting it at a kitchen table to building it into this wonderful international organization. And you mentioned briefly that you have a registry. Can you tell us more about that registry? Yeah, our registry, we call it the International PC Research Registry. So when we started PC Project, really there wasn't a lot known about PC. I think some Mm -hmm. of the genes had been discovered. Well, not I think, I know some of the genes had been discovered that um, if you have a mutation in, in one of those genes, they cause PC. But there was a lot of myths and a lot of misunderstanding about what PC really is. Again, back to the example that pachynechia means thick nails. Mm-hmm. And that's really the least of our problems. Thick nails, mm-hmm. it's, of I course, mean, yeah. it's cosmetic. There, there are infections, especially when kids are young and babies and young children especially get a lot of nail infections. But um, it's really those painful feet. And so what we do is we have an online registry. You can go right to our website. You can um, create a username, password, and join the registry right there. And um, the registry is great because within the registry, there's questions that kind of help with diagnosis. And Mm. um, so, and, and maybe I should back up a little bit and tell you that most of the patients that join our registry are not physician referred. They come to us because um, they've done an internet search of their symptoms and they found us through various ways. And so, or or they look at the photos on our website and they go, wow, maybe that could be me or maybe that's my husband or, you know, whatever. And so that's how they find us. And then they join the registry. We, at this time, I have to say at this time, we, we offer free genetic testing. And that has become really powerful because what that does is that gives patients not only a clinical diagnosis, but a genetic diagnosis. And so that's very empowering for patients to just be able to put a name on it, especially because they've never, you know, we have patients that join our registry of all ages. We have, we have a man that that I think he's probably in his seventies that joined the registry and he got his diagnosis through PC project. And, um, And that was great. But he said, you know, I know there's not a treatment yet, but for the first time I can say what it is. And I have an understanding. Why do my feet hurt? Why are my nails thick? Why, you know, it it is really powerful for him. So anyway, we give, we give patients a name and, and I, and, and even though it's, like I said, it's not a treatment yet, but it's empowering to at least know what you're dealing with. So on the patient side, the registry is, is important for patients to kind of have an answer. Mm -hmm. And then as far as the research side goes, the most empowering thing about the research, the registry is um, our data has been published. I mean, it's one thing for one patient to say, oh, I have sore feet and it really hurts to walk and I need to use, that's me. But then when you get 50 patients saying that or a hundred or 200, or now, you know, a thousand, you know, almost 2000 now in our registry, that becomes really yeah. powerful. And so the registry has really, um, it's kind of dispelled myths. It's established yeah. truth. And, um, and, and it has been published a number of times. Another thing, I'm just going on and on, but another thing is with, re- with the registry is uh, we're, we might be kind of stupid and naive, but we share our data, our registry data with any you know, valid researcher that, that wants to have a project and or wants to learn more. And so if they want a, a certain part of our data set, we, we share that with them. And, and this has resulted in numerous publications about PC. So you talk about diagnosis. Um, now, because the registry data has been published, if a patient goes to a doctor, he or she, the doctor is able to then you know, find us, they're able to find research, they're able to find literature, peer reviewed published literature about PC. And so it's really driven the, the research. And last thing I'm thinking about the research registry is our goal, of course, our treatments and cures. And the beauty of that is now, I always say, but it's so true. We know who our patients are, we know where they are, and we know their exact mutation. And so it's a beautiful thing. Whenever anybody needs patients for a study or a trial, we've got them. We know where they are. We don't have to chase them down. That's a great thing. And so any pharma out there that ever listens to this, or if they ever just know, we've got a registry, we know our patients, and they are willing and wonderful and ready to be 
um, ready to, to participate in trials. So that's a powerful thing. I'm really struck by um, the journey that your patients are on and many of them not getting diagnosed until they've found you or until they're older or they've joined the registry. And then when they do that, they have some answers, they have some clarity, and then they have this community that they're a part of, but they also have the ability to contribute directly to the science. I mean, that is got to just be such a, like you said, you use the word empowering. That's got to be a really empowering thing. I would imagine it sort of puts the patient back in the driver's seat a little bit. Like I have joined this community, not just for emotional support, but because I'm an important contributor to the science. Yeah, you really nailed that. That that's really true because I think people like me before we started PC Project, I just felt like I was going to live and die with PC, mm-hmm. and that was it. And so it's been great for our patients to be able to participate and say, "I can do something." In fact, we yeah. do have patients, and I hate this answer. We do have patients that, you know, we're getting a little bit older, and they say, "I'm doing this for the next generation," and I'm like, "No, no, I want I want it to be your generation. I don't want it to be right. for the next." But you really, you really keyed in on on something that's really important that our participants do care, and they they do care for themselves and for other people with PC. So Jan, I know there is a lot of research happening in PC Project. Can you um, shine a light on what's going on right now? Well, that's a good question because we're actually preparing for our 17th International PC Consortium Symposium. Yes, and and this meeting is going to be at the end of June. It's June 28th and 29th. It will be a virtual meeting. And what's happening there is we have asked researchers and scientists and physicians from all over the world who are doing anything in the PC space, anything PC research related at all. And actually I should say anything that has to do with um, genetic skin diseases because there is a crossover. So we're not just gonna have PC, but some others that we think might have some crossover applications. So anyway, long sentence, we are inviting them to to our consortium and they will be speaking. So it's three hours each day. And um, they'll be coming and presenting at that meeting, which is which is quite exciting for us. We're we're really excited because this will be our first meeting, you know, in over a year, and yeah. um, because of the pandemic, and so we're excited to see what has what's going to happen. And it's a very collaborative group. These are people. Well, I should say these are people that have been with us for from day one almost since wow. we, we established the consortium. We have really very powerful. Yeah, we have very loyal researchers, but we also have some new people and we are not an exclusive group. If anybody has anything that they think they can contribute, we welcome them, we want them. And so they'll come together, we'll talk. It's not gonna be in a webinar format, you know, where people can't participate. It will be in, a, in an open meeting format where people can see their faces, we can talk, we're gonna have some discussions. And so the, 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 I'm just gonna kind of give an overview of the program, we'll talk about basic research. So anybody that's doing anything in basic research, and then we'll have translational research. And then we'll talk about some of the the studies that have been happening, the clinical trials um, that have been happening. So that's what's going on. We're also gonna do some some key discussions. Um, and so that's the thing is, our, because I said our group was collaborative, we don't just wanna listen to discussions. We wanna listen, or excuse me, listen to presentations. We want to listen to the presentations and then have discussions and, and get these minds to talk mm-hmm. to us and say, okay, what's next on basic research? And then we're going to translational, transitional, translational. I can't even say the word. We're going to the next step and then we'll discuss what do we need to be doing there? And then because we're in clinical studies and, and we want that to be the ultimate goal, we're gonna have a discussion on endpoints. And because PC is a little tricky, it, it is a little bit hard. There's no two PC patients alike. So we hope it's gonna be a really great meeting to just get together again and to talk and to collaborate and just get the energizing feeling going. Um, I know you're collaborative. I know you are working with patients, you're working with researchers, but I also know you've had a really successful working relationship with pharma, in particular with Palvella. Can you talk about that relationship and how it was formed and just what the outcomes have been so far? 
Sure. So just so you know, we've done a lot of little studies and trials for PC, but Palvella Therapeutics have taken PC patients farther than we've ever gone before as far as a clinical trial. I, I don't have a lot of experience with pharma, so Palvella is kind of setting the trend for us or paving the way, but the people at Palvella are amazing. And I know sometimes pharma kind of gets a, a bad rap, maybe, you know, they're just out to make money. And of course, I, I don't have a problem with that. I don't, I know people can't work for free. Maybe I work for free, but nobody else can. <laughs> but these people have, the Palvella people have come and been part of our organization ever since they, you know, decided to take a, a potential treatment and make it, uh, excuse me, a, a potent, ever since they started developing a, a potential therapeutic. And what I mean by that is they have come to all our patient support meetings. They've come to the scientific meetings. They've held focus groups with our patients. They've, they've collaborated with me and my team and our advocates to make sure that they're doing everything right, you know, with the messaging. And so I don't, like I said, I have nothing to compare with. I don't know how pharma usually works with patient organizations, but these people have become my true friends. They have really cared about the patients and probably the fact that they do come to our patient organization, uh, excuse me, our patient support meetings. I feel like, you know, they've really listened to the patients and understand what they're going through. They really understand PC. So that's been a great thing. The other thing about probably the most exciting thing is they have recently run a phase two, three trial and um, for PC with, for this, for this treatment and they collaborated with us again. This is our registry in work, actually. This is perfect. I don't know, again, I don't know anything, but we, we um, fully enrolled the trial in eight months. And I don't, to me, everything is slow in getting things done, you know, as far as research to trials to cure, you know, everything is, I wish that would have all happened yesterday. But um, they say that fast. They say to enroll a trial in eight months is really fast. And so wow. that was another example of the fact that we know where our patients are, we know who they are, and we know their genetic confirmation. And so their diagnosis, in fact, every patient that was enrolled in that trial came through our registry and everyone to be in the trial needed a genetic testing report, you know, because they wanted to make sure that they truly had PC and mm. the, the exact PC, you know, they wanted K6As, K16s and K6Bs for this particular trial. And so they needed proof that they were really that, you know, wow. that they really did. So they used our registry to enroll. So, you know, so kind of two things working with Palvella, they used our registry or we used it, we used it, we advertised, we helped yeah. them with their trial. But then even during the trial, it was really interesting because, you know, once we um, received permission from our patients to take, to send their names off to the clinical sites, you know, then we didn't really follow those patients. I mean, it's not our business, you know, they, they mm. went off to the clinical trial sites and have the clinical trial. That said, because we are kind of a tight knit group, the patients would give us feedback about the trial and we would give it to, to Palvella. And so mm -hmm. they tweak things, you know, anything mm -hmm. from just transportation or, mm -hmm. you know, just little yeah. things like that or how the activity tracker was working. And so, you know, we were more than happy to give that feedback. And of course they gave the feedback to, you know, their coordinator sites, but um, mm -hmm. no, I don't know, just because we're family, you know, at PC mm -hmm. Project, they come back and they say, oh, Janice, you know, this is what's going on. I'd say, no problem. And then I would, let me tell Palvella and, and then Palvella would listen and then they would fix it. You know, they, so there was a lot of, um, they cared, Palvella cared very much about getting it right, about yeah. making sure the patients were okay, yeah. you know, that the messaging was right. Everything was really collaborative. And so I've, I've appreciated that because I felt like they didn't just want to say slam, bam, give us a patient and you're done. And, and no, they wanted to make sure they were taking really good care of our patients. And I think that's important too, because Palvella is working on a treatment and we hope it works. We hope it's, we hope it's something that will be approved. And, um, but you know, we're not there yet. And so, but, and, and we, but we hope it's just the first of many. 
And so right. we want our patients to, to keep working with us. They, we want us to, we want them to enroll in future trials. And so yeah. I just really appreciated working with a, a pharma company that cares very much about the patients and getting it right. And then collaborating with us and communicating with us. I'm really grateful for them for that. It seems like PC Project, having been founded on love, has managed to attract other people who believe in that same value. It sounds like your researchers and your patients and even Palvella all really want to hold that up and, and keep that love close, which I think is really, really, really special. I think it is too. In fact, I've been at these international PC consortium meetings and I've actually heard researchers say, this is such a special meeting. And, oh. and I, and, and then of course you go, Oh, we got this yeah. big name here with us and they think we're special. And, and I just, the, the gratitude I feel for these people is I, I can't express it enough. You know, it, 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 mm. it's humbling for me. So just so you know, too, it's also June awareness. June is PC awareness month. And this is a funny thing because we kind of really, we, we slam PC awareness really hard twice a year, usually in June awareness month, June PC awareness month. And then towards the end of the year, we, we do a big giving Tuesday type thing yeah. that really goes in, in, in sync with, with awareness as well. And it's so funny because we have, we'll put out things on our public social media and nobody responds to it, but we mm. put it in the private chat group and mm. everybody responds and everybody comments, but they don't want to out themselves and um, oh, they don't right. want anybody. They're so afraid that someone will know or their employer will know. And, and, and so it's just an interesting disease that I just, and, and I, I'll be honest, it's hard for me, even because I have so many patients that follow me personally, and I don't mm -hmm. know if that's best practices or not, but on social mm -hmm. media platforms, but I have a lot of patients that follow me and probably because we meet at the patient support meetings. And so they follow me and I, so I put stuff about PC in my public place mm -hmm. where my, where my, where my friends who know me, right. follow me and see me. And that's scary. But I'm, I'm getting to the point now where I'm like, okay, I, I'm in this role, I'm committed. And if we're going to get a cure, I've got to just be, mm -hmm. I've got to be public with what I've got and, and let people know it hurts. Mm -hmm. And every time I stand up, it hurts. I've got to let them know. So thank you so much for being here today, Jan. It has been really, really enlightening getting to know you more and getting to know more about PC Project. I can't wait to see where the research takes us. And I just really want to know the outcomes of the Palvella trial. Um, and I just want to remind everybody that the PC Consortium meeting is coming up in June. June, what did you say? 20... 28th and 29th. You can learn more about PC Project over at pachyonychia.org. And you can find out about trials. You can find out about the registry. You can find out about the consortium meeting and also learn more about PC Awareness Month and how you might be able to get involved.